Solar flares are among the most titanic explosions of energy in the solar system. A typical flare could supply human civilization with enough energy for 10,000 years. Astronomers have studied solar flares for the last century, but only in the last 50 years have their impacts to radio and communications technologies become more than just a nuisance to be endured. Billions of dollars in technology, and even human lives, now hang in the balance. Back in the 1800s, physicist Joseph von Fraunhofer invented the spectroscope, which would turn out to be one of the most important tools of astronomy in the centuries to come. By passing sunlight through the instrument, a rainbow of light was created, crossed by hundreds of black lines. It was soon discovered that these lines were the fingerprints of individual elements in the sun, heated to high temperature. Each element produces light at only specific wavelengths. No two elements have exactly the same pattern of lines, which look something like the product barcodes that you see in a supermarket. Thanks to the spectroscope, astronomers could now determine the elementary composition of stars, planetary atmospheres, and nebulae without actually having to go there and take direct samples. During the first half of the 20th century, the precise relationship between these atomic lines and other physical properties of a gas were finally worked out. Astronomers could now use the spectroscope to determine the exact temperature of a gas, its density, its motion, how much turbulence was present, whether the gas was in rotation, and whether a magnetic field was present. By combining photography with spectroscopy, a new technique emerged that revealed the sun's character far beyond what photography alone could record. In 1890, George Ellery Hale built an instrument called the spectroheliograph at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He first broke sunlight into a spectrum then isolated one of the atomic lines that corresponded to hydrogen heated to 10,000 degrees. By using this instrument as a very precise optical filter, he could see the sun through hydrogen light only. What was more important was that Hale could now isolate and study one facet of the sun, its hydrogen gas heated to 10,000 degrees. The photographs revealed for the first time a complex solar surface laced with ribbons and bands of magnetic energy confining superheated hydrogen atoms. On many occasions, his studies of sunspots even captured sudden eruptions, or hydrogen alpha flares, that were completely invisible in normal optical photographs. At the heart of every theory for why solar flares occur is a specification of the temperature, density, energy, and magnetic field inside the flare and how these change in time and space. Just as viewing the landscape with out-of-focus glasses only gives a rough idea of what is around you, astronomers are also hampered by resolution when they try to specify the physical parameters of a flare. Sometimes the most interesting phenomena occur in parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that cannot be studied from the ground. For example, the X-rays from the heart of a solar flare are completely blocked by Earth's atmosphere, so only satellites can clearly see these details. One of the most sophisticated solar satellites launched to date is Hanodi. It is a complex observatory with a far more sophisticated array of instruments designed to probe the detailed physics of magnetic fields, coronal heating, and the origins of solar flares. I recently talked with Dr. George Doshek, a solar physicist, He's a solar flare expert who uses Hanoda to investigate solar flares. He is the head of the Solar Terrestrial Relationships Branch in the Space Science Division at the Naval Research Lab in Washington, D.C. George, can you tell us a little bit about the Hanoda satellite and its instruments? Yes, the Hanoda satellite is a Japanese satellite launched at the end of September in around 2006. It's designed to study the atmosphere of the sun from space. Now, you may be surprised to know the sun has an atmosphere. People, often people are surprised at this. But the sun's atmosphere extends from its surface to the Earth. We don't know what causes the atmosphere, but because the atmosphere exists, the sun has a profound effect on the Earth and what we call space weather. Now, the sun's atmosphere emits white light, 
It emits X-rays and emits ultraviolet light. The X-rays and ultraviolet light can't penetrate our own atmosphere, so we have to study these emissions from space. So Hinode has three instruments on it. One is a white light telescope designed specifically to look at the sun in white light, so we can see the surface of the sun, but it can also see a little bit up into the atmosphere. That instrument was provided by the Japanese with a contribution from Lockheed and NASA from the United States. There's also an X-ray telescope on the satellite. The X-ray telescope looks at the higher temperature part of the sun's atmosphere. The sun's surface is relatively cold at only 5,500 degrees Kelvin. You think that's hot, but it really isn't compared to the upper part of the atmosphere, which goes up to one to three million degrees. The X-ray telescope sees this part of the atmosphere and it makes movies of features that we see in the atmosphere, explosions, and how these explosions propagate outwards towards the Earth sometimes. Finally, there's another instrument called an extreme ultraviolet spectrometer. Now, a spectrometer is an instrument that takes whatever light it's looking at, in this case, ultraviolet, and it breaks it up into a kind of a rainbow. And in the rainbow, we can see fingerprints of all sorts of things going on in the gas that it's emitting the light. We can tell what elements the gas is made of. We can tell what the temperature of the gas is. We can tell what the density is of the gas. And uh, we can tell uh, its motions and its flows. Now, this instrument was provided by the United Kingdom uh, in a consortium with NASA as well in the Naval Research Lab, of which I'm part of. And I should also mention that the X-ray telescope was provided by the Center for Astrophysics in the United States with a contribution also from the Japanese. Uh, the Norwegians have also contributed to the, to the mission. They supply the ground support equipment for our instrument, the Extreme Ultraviolet Spectrometer, and they also provide tracking station. So basically, Hinode, uh, although a Japanese satellite and launched in Japan, is really an international mission to study the sun by scientists all over the world. So what's the big question that you think Hinode will be able to answer about solar activity? The big question is, what causes it? What heats the atmosphere? And how are these, how is the energy stored? How is it released? And how does it propagate to the Earth? We'd like to trace the origins of the atmosphere down to the surface of the sun. I believe I said the sun's surface was relatively cold, 5,500 degrees. There, most of the emission occurs in what we call white light or visible light. Uh, now, to go a little higher, we have to go to shorter wavelengths, but not as short as we have to go to see the hottest parts of the sun's atmosphere. Now, also in the, in the atmosphere of the sun, there are explosions called solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. When flares occur, the temperature of the atmosphere can go up to 20 million degrees. So there, the x-rays are really important. Uh, even in the extreme ultraviolet, we can still see this, this radiation because of the nature of atomic emissions from atoms. So by looking at the atmospheric structures that we see in the X-ray, the extreme ultraviolet, and the visible, we hope to put everything together and come up with a physical picture of what actually causes the eruption. We know that it somehow has something to do with the magnetic field of the sun, that mechanical motions in the surface stress the magnetic field, and then the magnetic field releases these stresses and heats gas even further. But we don't know the details of this, and Hanodi, we hope, will make really strong uh, and, and great contributions towards solving this problem. And how do you think this uh, knowledge about solar activity is going to have practical applications here on Earth? Well, the sun's atmosphere produces these uh, mass ejections and flares very close to its surface, but the effects of these uh, radiation and particles that are accelerated, especially in the ejections of mass, reach the Earth and they can do a lot of damage near the Earth. For example, they can uh, cause satellites to fail. They can disrupt communications on the Earth. They can cause power outages. They can heat the atmosphere and cause the drag coefficients of satellites to change so they're harder to track. Uh, they are hazards to astronauts. If we wish to go to Mars or one of the other planets, uh, we, uh, we have to take the sun into account. So to be able to predict when these disturbances are going to occur, helps us to, to do things to mitigate the, the, the damage or to avoid it entirely.